We don't practice because someone makes us practice. We don't practice for fame or glory. We don't practice to impress anyone and make us feel better about ourselves. We certainly don't practice for money. We practice because we yearn to connect. Connect to the ancestors that built this. Connect to the modern geniuses that inspire us. Connect to our city and our scene and the listeners in the back of the room. But mostly we want to connect to that spark that lives deep within all of us. That spark that wants to be fire. We practice every day to clear a path for that spark. Let's practice together. Welcome to the Daily Guided Practice Session. Let's start with our chromatic scale, 88 beats per minute. Let's get to work. Welcome, welcome everybody. My name is Adam Annis and I'm so excited to be here because today we are working today. You know, some of these guided practice sessions, we cover theory, some of them we cover harmony and chords and things like that. But today is gonna be a bit of a workout, why? because today we are practicing three levels of piano exercises. We've got something easy, we got something kind of medium, and we've got something diabolical. So this is for pianists. Get to your piano and get ready to put in the good work because we're gonna, we're gonna walk away feeling stronger, feeling a little peppier, maybe a little choppier. We'll see how it goes. My hands are freezing as we're starting this. So this is, uh, this is perfect for me right now as it's very cold where I am in the world. Let me know where you're practicing from in the world today and let's get going here. So today I wanted to do three levels of piano exercises. I wanted to hit some classic exercises. Uh, we're going to do just a very simple up and down with our fingers. We're going to do a bit of a stretch exercises uh, that, that does like a little tense thing. And we're going to do a diabolical uh, piano finger independence exercise, uh, which by the way, I have a whole course here on uh, Open Studio called uh, Piano Finger Independence, uh, coincidentally enough. And it's all uh, dealing with what we deal with in the very last exercise here, the most diabolical. It's a very popular course, but it's, uh, it's, it's not to be played with. It's a really fun time and you will get better shops with it. You can go to openstudiojazz.com. You can follow a link here in the chat or description. I think we're gonna have a little bit of a discount for our YouTube people here today. So check that out. Okay, so three levels of piano exercises. What are we gonna do with these three levels of piano exercises? All right, stay with me here. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do some Hannon. Don't run away. We're gonna do some Hannon. We're gonna make it fun. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but we are. Uh, we're gonna do something from the Behringer Daily Technical Studies, which is really fun, a nice little stretch exercise. And then we're gonna do, as I said, just a completely diabolical exercise from the Philip exercises for independence of the fingers, which is, in my opinion, the most uh, strength building of any of these. I mean, really, whatever you do, right? Just any sort of work at the piano is good work, right? But those Phillips exercises, man, they are tough. So I want to just put in some, some rules here, though, for today's practice. I want to have three guidelines to keep in mind. Um, and I think these are really important for getting out of the weeds on technical practice. If you're like me or probably anybody who had piano lessons when they were a kid, uh, you maybe got hung up on some technical studies. You know, when you saw this Hannon cover there, you might got a, got a little, little pang of fear happening, right? For some for some flashbacks of some painful memories of just going through this very boring and it's drudgery and you're eating your vegetables and all that. No, 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 that's not what we're going to do. We're going to put some guidelines on it today to actually help us become better pianists by the end of this session. You will have a better understanding of how your hands, fingers, arms, shoulders, back, neck, and face all come together on this beautiful instrument to make such a beautiful sound. That's the goal anyway. And so we wanna cover these, these uh, awesome exercises, these timeless classic exercises with a few things in mind. So the first, no pedal. 
if you have some rope or possibly a bungee cord, you might just strap your right foot to your piano bench. And then if your left foot creeps over there, just strap your left foot to your piano bench. This is like one of the, the first mistakes you hear beginner pianists, you know, you've never like gone across social media or YouTube or something and you hear someone and it's just all, everything is so washed out in the sustain that there's almost no, I mean, it's just everything is, everything is just, it's all sustained for everything they do. And it just doesn't sound great, right? Also, it is a bit of a crutch. It does not help our piano technique. We'll never get a true legato sound if we're always doing any of these exercises that are meant to be controlled by using this pedal. It's not, it's not something that we want to include in our finger exercises at all, right? So it has its place. It's a beautiful tool, and it's, it's really what makes uh, this instrument so special. It's an expression pedal. It really is. But that's not what we're working on today. We're working on our fingers. We're working on our hands. We're working on our natural legato uh, using the muscles in our body. So that's number one. The second thing that I want you to keep in mind as we go through all of these exercises is to stay physically relaxed, okay? I want you to consider this the main goal or one of the main goals of doing these exercises. It's not to play them cleanly. It's not to play them faster. It's not to play them with more power or louder. It's not about that at all. It's about playing them in a relaxed way. Because if you can play them very fast and in control, but you are so tense that it looks like you're you know, squatting 380 pounds, that's not good. Your audience does not want to get off work, drive to a club to watch someone struggle like that. They, they want it to look easy. Think about all the great pianists you've ever seen and how one of the things that you might have thought to yourself or told the person that you were seeing the show with was, it was amazing. They were doing all this crazy stuff, but it was completely effortless. We want to practice that, right? So we don't just want to be able to play this stuff clean and fast. We do, but if it's not physically relaxed, if we're not able to be light with it, we're not really practicing it. Then we're just practicing it in a way that we don't want to convey to our audience, and that's not worth it. So our second guideline here is to stay physically relaxed. Very, very important. And then third, I want you to keep a mindset, a mental state of confidence and playfulness. We want to be confident and playful with these. I know that seems trivial and maybe a bit naive, but this is one of the most important things we can work on, especially in technical exercises. This is what's going to get us out of, oh, my classical piano teacher said I have to do all these at this metronome click and I'm just going to do it. This is not that, right? If we can stay confident and playful, if we can put ourselves in some situations mentally where we're playing these things and they mean something to us, these, these you know, very random seeming exercises where we're just moving our our hands if we're practicing our performance and the way we play them with as much detail as we're trying to get out of the notes that we're playing and we're physically relaxed and there's no sustain pedal as we're doing this that is a great session we will have a great session we will play hannon and have a good time i promise you i promise you okay so that's it so just to recap here no sustain pedal Tie that leg behind your piano bench. Stay physically relaxed always. These are the three goals of this. It's not to play anything we're about to do, but if we can do this, we've, we've achieved something. And to keep a confident and playful mindset as we do these things. That, that's the, the trifecta here of some technical work. Because then we can hit any tempo. We can do these really slowly, very, very, as slow as possible. And if we don't use a sustain pedal, if we're just using the natural legato of our fingers, and we stay physically relaxed, and we stay confident and playful, then we've had a good session. You ready? Don't run away. Don't be scared. Bam. Hannon, the virtuoso pianist, number one. We've all been here. Hey, listen, I hate it too. <laughs> I, I wanted to confront it today. That's As I was putting together things to do, I was like, well, of course not Hannon. But then I thought, you know what? Why not Hannon? This is actually a beautifully simplistic exercise. It is literally running our fingers from the thumb to the pinky in our right hand and the pinky to the thumb in the left and then backwards. 
it's a gorgeously simple way to play and move our fingers. And it's a great way to warm up. It's a great way to get some blood flowing in our fingers. And again, if you can't do this with a bit of confidence and a bit of ease, uh, then you probably can't do anything with confidence and ease. So I want to just go through it once here. Bare bones, just complete wonder bread. We're going to do 16th notes. So it's going to be not slow, but also not very fast. This is 60 beats per minute. This is the lowest I believe on the hand and metronome marking for this right here. So the first time through, what I want to do is not to put anything on this at all. We're just going to play this very vanilla. I want you to, to think of your hands being very curved as we go all the way up. So uh, we're just going to continue this pattern up two octaves until we get to this G and G, and then we're going to go back down. It's hand. I mean, you know this, right? You've done this a billion times. Me too. So let's do it. Let's really not try to sink into any old negative reactions to this. I want you to try to come at this again with a playful mindset. Let's imagine we're telling a joke to a group of people right now as we play this. I know that seems silly, but this really helps me to stay very light. So imagine that we're playing this as a joke. You ready? One, two, da, 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 da. gone through oh it looks like i have a little misprint here obviously the first note is c right i almost didn't even write this one out because i was like everybody knows this so excuse the uh excuse the misprint there so uh let's do this again now this time let's keep it very playful i want you to actually in your mind try to be performative with this imagine that you are at the village vanguard this is going to seem stop just stop everything it's going to seem very silly, but I want you to imagine that you're at the Village Vanguard and uh, Herbie Hancock and Chick Corea and Keith Jarrett all just walked in for whatever reason. They're all in town and they all decided to come see you play Hannon at the, <laughs> at the Village Vanguard. But that's what we're doing. But I want you to actually perform this. I want you to put the attention on this that it deserves. Let's try it again. I really I want you to pay attention to this in a way that you haven't probably since you were very young. Let's try it again. One, two, sha, 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 sha. Keep those fingers curved. tell you what I was thinking that whole time up and down was I was thinking about oh I can't believe I made a mistake on that on the chart for this right I was I was thinking like how does that feel here on this Hannon exercise that I've played a billion times how can I make the frustration with myself that I'm feeling right now how can I relate that to Herbie and Keith and Chick who are here at the Vanguard seeing me 
it seems a little silly, but this really helps to get out of just running your fingers over the piano and actually perform it. Let's do it again. And I want you to find whatever's here with you right now and put it to this very blank canvas that we have of this simple warm up. Before we do, take a big deep breath with me. Shake it out. Roll your shoulders up and back and then drop them down. You might lift from the back of your head, your chest up so that you have a nice straight spine. Put your feet flat on the floor, right? A little yoga at the piano here, but we want to get comfortable. Let's do even one of these guys here. Line it up there. Perfect. Let's try it again. I want you to bring what you have today with it. I'm going to bring the fact that I miswrote one of the best known exercises of all time. So see if you can hear that in mine. Ready? One, two, sha, 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 sha. Give it the attention it deserves. it up just a little bit we're gonna do two more times here again bring with to this with with what you have right now whatever you're feeling see if you can convey this to an imaginary audience and keep it playful keep it confident right again if you were to play this in front of one of your heroes you wouldn't meekly play it right you'd want to tell a story so tell that story the great thing about these little technical exercises is you can still come up with your own story for it. There's not much story here to it. There's no music here, really. So it's up to us to kind of practice conveying something with it. Let's try it right here. One, two, sha, 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 sha. to these these tempos it's key to stay physically relaxed as we get faster right remember our guide rails no sustain pedal stay physically relaxed and be confident and playful as we do this right again i'm still trying to play a performance where i'm thinking about okay i i wrote out hannon this morning and i i wrote the wrong note on the very first note of the most famous exercise. That's something I can work with though. That's a mistake that I can play with if I'm playful and I'm confident. And I am. This is pretty, uh, pretty up there. Again, shake it out. We're just warming up here on some Hannon, right? It feels good to play Hannon, right? There's nothing wrong with running your fingers up and down the keyboard. Whoever said that that had to be boring or not useful. I think it's very useful actually. Let's do it. One, two, cha da 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 da
Let's try it again. One more time. Shake it out. Big deep breath for me. This is a big kid tempo. It feels really good, actually. Here we go. One, two, da 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 da. I just round that a hundred. for a minute uh we're coming in hot there but that feels awesome doesn't that feel great let's revisit a little bit here so we're, we're today we're going to cover our hannon our behringer and our phillips exercises um and i just want to revisit our guidelines no sustain pedal we want to stay physically relaxed and be confident and playful as we play these technical exercises. Again, we do not want to get bogged down in we're working on technique, right? We got to eat our vegetables. That's not what this is all, what this is about. In fact, if this is a chore for you, you won't do technique stuff as much as you probably could. And they can be very useful tools and they can actually help your musicality quite a bit. A lot of people think it's the opposite, but I just I just don't see it that way. All the great players I know have done uh, some study of this kind of material. So next, we're going to do a bit of a stretching exercise here. These are the Behringer technical, daily technical studies. They're terrific. Uh, if you don't know it, we have affiliate links to all of the books there in our description. You can check out the links there and get your own copies of all of these. And this is a really cool one. The fingering on this one is important. So this is to get uh, to help stretch and get tense. It's something that I hear all the time. I can't reach tense. You know, I, I'll do some chord arrangements that have some tense in them. And some people will say, well, I, I can never get that, that tense. Well, you can if you just put in a little stretch work every day. That's all you got to do. And these are great because you don't actually have to hit tense in, a, in you know, together here. We can kind of stretch our way to it. This is a really good stretch for, uh, I'll try to get it here, between the, the thumb and the first finger. So like all of the Behringer exercises, uh, he's got a really great way of going through the keys. So once through C major, once through minor, once on A flat there, which is the five chord of D flat, which is where we'll go. So we'll take this up chromatically, right? Major, minor, it's a bit of transposition you have to do here. And then A major, right? And the five, the next So you can go all the way up, and we'll go all the way up one octave doing this, uh, going up in with this stress exercise. Try to keep between here, try to keep the one and two, like this finger. Try to keep it all the way up. It's hard, but it's really good for that stretch, really good. If you can get that thumb stretched out some more that way from the rest of the hand it's not even so much the pinky but if you can get that thumb stretched you're going to be able to hit more tense so that's what we want to work on we're going to start very slow for this one because this is tough it, there's a little bit of brain stuff that hap has to happen for you to just transpose it and so i don't want to get caught up in that let's start here at 56 beats per minute we're going to do eighth notes that's how slow we're going to start it doesn't have to be fast if we're doing no sustain pedal, right? We're just keeping it nice and natural legato and we're physically relaxed and we're confident and we're playful. We're gonna be able to do this every time. So let's take these three. We're gonna then just transpose this up in half steps uh, all the way up. Ready? Shake it out. This is gonna be a nice stretch. It's gonna feel good. Here we go. Two, three, and eighth notes.
right. So yeah, so some people are commenting here on the live stream that you should be rolling your wrist and that's great advice. For sure, we wanna keep a nice wrist roll going. I'm trying to keep my fingers as curved as much as possible. I'm trying to get a nice big stretch out of this, so I might not be rolling as much as you, but that's okay. You can all get something a little different out of these. I'm still trying to make some music out of these, more importantly. Let's do it again. We're gonna up the tempo a little bit. We're gonna stay with eighth notes. Let's do it right here. Physically relaxed, confident, playful. Have fun with it. Here we go. One, two, three, and four. And no sustain pedal here. Nice and legato. Nice and easy. feels great that's a really good stretch really really good stretch again we want to stay physically relaxed be confident be playful even as we're doing these very repetitive things okay i want you to take another deep breath i'm gonna have some water i need to hydrate if you like these kind of workouts go ahead and hit the like or subscribe button we want to know what you want to practice i love doing this kind of stuff and i can do more of it uh, but just let me know if this is your thing, because uh, it's fun. It's fun for me. So our very last one. Uh, this is ridiculous. Shake it out. Take a big deep breath again. Maybe roll your shoulders. Ooh, maybe do the classic cartoon piano crack in your knuckles. You know what I mean? So this one, I'm going to put a little warning. I should have made a little warning logo here to if you're feeling any sharp pain or a lot of tension, especially right here, right? Like right in your forearm, just pick your hands up, right? This is to build strength throughout your hand, these Phillips. Um, this is part of the second series of the Phillips, and this is by far the hardest one. So these are meant to strengthen individual fingers, and the entire idea behind them is all of your fingers are pressing down on the piano, except for, for one in each hand. And those are gonna play some triplet figures here. And then they hold. So your right hand, uh, everything is playing a C diminished from C to C, right? So C, E flat, G flat, A, and then C. 
all within an octave. Your left hand is on the A below, middle C, and then playing an A diminished. So it's the same notes, right? Just a different inversion. This starts with our outer four fingers, our pinky, our fourth finger, our middle finger, and our second finger. And then we, we tap our thumbs. And then we hold that thumb down on beat two, and then do our second fingers, and then our third fingers. When, they, when they're done, they have to hold back down. So at any given time, there are four fingers that are holding down on this diminished chord, either C diminished or A diminished. And, the, and the, there's one that is lifting up. This, this is crazy. This is some crazy stuff. But this is so good. This is so good for us. And uh, I thought we would end with this because it's just, oh my God, it's so intense. But if you, did, if you do this for two weeks or a month, if you do these Phillips exercises, again, we have links here in the description. You can check out the books. I also have a course, Open Studio, that is all Phillips exercises called Piano Finger Independence. You can check that out here, a link in the description. Um, if you stick to it, uh, we've heard from so many of our members that uh, it's just, it's game changing as far as the strength you can build. Uh, it's too fast. Again, we're gonna do half the meter here. Oh, man, that seems good. You ready to try it? Oh, so I should say before we get to it, we're just gonna do this for. Let's just do this first. There's, there's. It gets worse. It gets worse. Let's just do this. Just, just do this one. Let's practice it. One, two, dot, 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 dot. down but the one playing the triplets that's it so that's one time through now here's where it gets interesting we take it up chromatically so this is definitely one where I find that it helps to have a nice curved finger especially as more more keys are more black keys are involved the, the more I can curve my finger and kind of level the playing field the better it gets Before we do this exercise though, I wanna do an additional exercise. So you see here this C diminished chord, the very first chord, and that A diminished chord. I just wanna play these in half notes and I wanna take them up chromatically. This is gonna be very helpful for us as we take this exercise up chromatically. So let's just take this first chord, two beats each, and move it up chromatically one octave. Each of the four notes, right? Trust me, it's harder than it seems. One, two, half notes, and up chromatically. This is a nice setup here for what we're about to do. Curve those fingers, stay physically relaxed here. This is one that it really, it pays dividends to stay confident and stay playful. Because if you don't, it'll eat you up. Let's go back down. Shake it out. 
For a lot of you, that might be the most your fourth and fifth fingers have worked in a while. Let's try it now. This exercise, this whole bar, and then we take it up an octave chromatically. Remember, everything that isn't playing these triplets, the inner, the inner voices, is being held down. Very important. Two, three, and... more. 
proud to admit. Can still be confident even when things get a little bit muddy and hard isn't that awesome that exercise is so difficult it's so good for us just take some time give yourself a little love a little pat on the back did some good work today roll your wrists a little bit just stretch it out a little bit you know feels really good after a nice workout to just get some good stretching in again drink plenty of water I know it's like, oh, we're just playing the piano. Yeah, you're, you're, you're working some tendons. You're stretching some things out. You're working some muscles that need some love too, just as if you were squatting or doing deadlifts or whatever. So yeah, good stuff, huh? Hannon, Behringer, and Philip, three classics, three levels that Phillips is maniacal at the end. Thanks everybody for sharing your time with me today. Super fun to work on this stuff for you. Again, if you want to get more into the Phillips, uh, they actually start a lot easier than that and then work up to that. I have a whole course called Piano Finger Independence. Uh, you can check that out here. Uh, you could also, also uh, always go to openstudiojazz.com and check out all of our courses and all of our guided practice sessions. We're over there practicing all the time, trying to get better, trying to work on it, trying to stretch it out, trying to get stronger. So, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Great stuff, as always. Until next time, happy practicing. See you, folks. <laughs>